The introduction of high-speed satellite internet to Jamaica is being hailed by some as a game-changing addition to the island's telecommunications network. Starlink, an internet service provider belonging to tech billionaire Elon Musk, had a license approved just over two weeks ago by Jamaica's Ministry of Science and Technology to offer satellite internet services in the country. At the time, Science and Technology Minister Daryl Vaz spoke to CVM television journalists about the company's plans to launch on the island before the year's end. My pen has a lot of ink in it and I will be going to office. I was in cabinet today, going to office tomorrow to sign the, the license and the, and the recommendation of the OUR and the SAB license will be completed this week because they require two licenses. And I got communication from Starlink today to say that if they get those two licenses within this week, they will be, to, they will be able to start operations by the end of this year, this calendar year, which is a matter of two months. So that's another game changer in terms of alternative services and competition. Starlink is considered the world's first group of low orbiting satellites functioning as one system to provide broadband internet. The latency issues of traditional satellite internet have been mitigated enough that the service is robust enough to allow for streaming, online gaming, video calls, and other services that require low ping times between client machine and network router. At the time the company's license to operate in Jamaica was approved, Vaz called it, quote, a move in the right direction. In addition to increasing choice in internet service provider for consumers across the island, Starlink's introduction means that residents of remote rural areas that have never had access to broadband internet connectivity previously could now get online. Starlink's satellite services are also adding resilience to the country, as internet connections can be maintained uninterrupted even in the face of natural disasters. Across the globe, the company's internet services have held up in the aftermath of hurricanes, wildfires, and flooding. And in recent news, the company has provided connectivity to Ukraine, even as its land-based network infrastructure has come under threat from the ongoing Russian invasion. Some early adopters in Jamaica have already signed up with Starlink, and at least one public figure is tweeting positively about the service. Gordon Swaby, CEO of social education website EduFocal, said that he was able to receive high-speed internet within a few minutes of plugging in the easily transportable satellite receiver. He said that all the equipment needed was electricity and that one receiver could serve multiple people within the same area. A map on the Starlink website indicates that services are not just available in Jamaica, but also in the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Martinique, and Guadeloupe. Plans are to roll out service to the rest of the region in coming months, including countries such as St. Vincent and the Grenadines later this year, Antigua and Barbuda and Barbados in the first quarter of 2023, and St. Lucia and Dominica sometime after that. With Starlink's aggressive expansion plans, ease of sign-up, Jamaican users say they were charged in local currency with free shipping of equipment and competitive pricing. The two major telecommunications providers in the region, Flow and Digicel, must be paying close attention to developments. As Starlink begins to compete with the two existing networks for customers, market analysts expect broadband prices to change. But how can the land-based ISPs compete with the introduction of satellite internet? Will they be forced into expensive equipment upgrades to also offer satellite service? Can they partner in some way to offer a blended service? Are their current customers likely to switch, or are people happy to remain with their legacy service? All questions that will yield answers in the months and years to come.